I'm Matt Craig. I'm VP of Sales and Marketing for Graphient, a new startup in the connectivity space. Um, we came out of Stealth yesterday, so I'm sure everybody got the Twitters and the LinkedIn, the LinkedIn messages and everything. So um, thank you, or I'm sorry, one, one, one of the two. Um, we're happy to be here. Yesterday was a long day. So uh, if Ollie or I stumble on our words or nod off or, or, or any of that, please um, excuse us. So who are we? So as I said, Silicon Valley Startup launched yesterday, founded in 2020. So two years old, spent two years building the service, building the architecture, building the product. We've been in early field trials and pilots with enterprise customers since April of this year. Um, and we're looking to tackle a market that's about $58 billion in total. And I'll walk you through what that is and, and, and how we come up with that number as we, as we get there. A little bit more about us, who, who we are. Um, it's a very familiar team to, to a lot of people. Um, Khaled Raza is our CEO and founder. Khaled is considered the father of SD-WAN. So it's a space that we know a lot about. And then when you look at the team, um, you can see we, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the team has, has core strength at, at Viptela. A lot of us were very, very early at Viptela. Um, Ali and I drove some of the, the earliest and largest SD-WAN deals way back in 2014, 2015. I can't believe it's been almost 10 years. Um, but it's a strong team, very, very focused in the network space. Um, from an advisor perspective, we've pulled in people that really, really understand networking, both from a, a building, the products with Scott Harrell, who was SVP and GM of, of the routing business unit at, at Cisco. Woody Sessoms led enterprise sales, led the service provider group at Cisco. And then Joe Pinto drove the, the support organization and grew the support organization back in the early days at Cisco when, um, when the, the TAC team was, was just building. Since then, he's moved over to Pure and really has built that, that customer success and customer experience team there. Um, so we, uh, we're, we know the market. We know what the enterprise customers really look for in this space, and that's how we're looking to tackle it. So what are we doing? Really, to talk, to talk about what we're doing, we've we got to take a step back and look at where we were and where we came from. So if we go all the way back to 2000, you can tell I go all the way back to 2000 because you can see the gray hair and the camera on the back of my head right now shows me how gray my hair actually is. Which is awesome. But if we go back to 2000 and really kind of the birth of MPLS, MPLS really fit a need. It came to market at a time when unified communications was growing rapidly, when enterprises were connecting all of their branches and needed to move away from frame relay, needed to move away from, from dedicated kind of point to point connections. It took off. From 2000 to 2010, it, it became a $50 billion market. It really, really hit that need. But as we grew and, and as we kind of progressed over time from 2000 to 2010, it started to show some shortcomings. And it started to show shortcomings around things like video, around things like O365, around things that weren't in customer data centers, or were moving out of customer data centers, or needed more bandwidth. MPLS could provide it, but it was really, really, really expensive. We saw large networks, large enterprise networks and large enterprise customers were spending 200, 300, 400 million dollars a year on their, on their MPLS connectivity. And when they looked at going to the bandwidth that they would need to support things like streaming video in their branches, they looked at adding another 100, 100 or 150 million dollars a year to those, to that MPLS bill. So that was really the genesis of, of SD WAN. You know, the idea that we needed to get 
bandwidth for cheaper. We needed a way to support commodity brand within these branches. We needed last mile flexibility and we needed visibility. So SD-WAN grew from, from zero to, it's about an $8 billion market now. Um, we, sold, we sold Viptela to, to Cisco in, in 2017 for $600 million. And, and the estimates are that it's about a billion dollar business within Cisco right now. So we've seen that growth in that space. But what we've seen, and, and, and as we've seen the, the enterprise networks progress, we've moved away from this, this you know, predictable topology. We've moved away from hub and spoke or really even full mesh to this, this world of unpredictable topologies, to this world where applications are spun up in the cloud, on infrastructure that the enterprise doesn't control. They're connected to over networks or over, over services that the enterprises don't control. It's really this almost digital wilderness of, of topology. Um, and, and trying to use a technology like SD-WAN or trying to use something that is, that is really dedicated to, to pre-building bespoke networks or pre-building configurations or, or building an overlay over an underlay transport just doesn't work in this kind of environment. It just, it just doesn't meet the needs of, of what we're seeing customers demand. So that's what, the problem that we looked, set out to solve at Graphium. It's really kind of the, the problem statement that we look at. So how do we solve it? You know, what, what does this new approach need to be? So it needs to be a private network. We don't have the ability to build overlays anymore. We don't have the, the, the support. We can't build the tunnels needed. We can't build the, uh, the security needed to, to go over a, a public network. It needs to have enterprise grade reliability. One of the nice things about MPLS that provided an SLA provided a, a, a service level agreement. You knew what kind of latency, what kind of loss, what kind of jitter you would see on that network. So we need to provide that. And the other thing we need to do is we need to deliver this as a service. We can't rebuild networks anymore. You can't buy hardware, buy software licenses and, and, and build out these large configurations, these bespoke networks anymore. So we truly have to deliver as a service to give, to give customers that agility, to give the scalability and, and really to make it cost-effective. So what are we looking at from a, from a customer perspective? So we're, we're really looking at enterprise customers. We're looking at four key verticals, financial services, healthcare, manufacturing, and retail. They have specific use cases that, that we'll get into that we're, that we're targeting in, in, in those verticals. Um, one of those, you know, one of the, the things that we see a lot of these enterprises needing is, is this business to business connectivity. So the connectivity between a pharma company and the hospitals or development of these mRNA vaccines. Connectivity between financial services companies and their service providers that provide market data feeds or, or proxy services or that kind, of, that kind of thing. In manufacturing, we see business to business connections between manufacturer and, and either consumer, the customer that is, that is working with that manufacturer or the IoT or, or machine device companies. Um, and, and really we're looking at multiple cloud instances so that we can seamlessly and easily do Cloud on ramp. So a, a question about the, the verticals. How far down small do you see this solution going in a vertical? What's where's the point where it would you'd be too small to benefit? So so we really are focused on enterprise and we define that as about a billion and up in revenue. Some of the early EFTs, some of the early, early pilot customers have been just sub that, you know, but it's it's 750 to, to 800 million a year in revenue from a, from a, um, if we just look at it, like from a, from a size, from a branch count perspective, 
one of the uh, one of the EFTs on the financial services about seventy five branches. So kind of that 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 level that level land up. When we look at other verticals, when you look at manufacturing, we're, we're in like the the hundred site type type of connection because they are much larger sites. You know they're doing they're doing five hundred megs or or a gig of connectivity into those sites. So that's where you start to see those those problems develop. Okay. Well, like okay, um, I have like service provider space uh, providing that is. So they can provide your service as a service to me, for example, as a smaller company. You looking at that? We are. We are. That will be, um, as I said, we launched yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, get with the program. <laughs> Do you need some numbers for at and <laughs> I think the answer to that question was, it's on the business plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eventually was the answer to that question. Although I don't know if you saw some of the, Things that I was quoted in say, as saying in some of the some of the articles that came out about us, but uh, <laughs> AT and T and Verizon might not want to talk to me at this point. <laughs> um, but uh, eventually, you're right. You're right. So, um, so really, we're looking at we're looking at a at enterprise mm -hmm. right now with with some work with VARs and SIs around having having VARs and SIs deliver a managed service. And they're very interested. And as Ollie gets into the architecture and as you kind of see what, what we do and how we do it, mm -hmm. you'll understand why that's interesting to them versus a, versus a traditional managed service mm -hmm. of, of you know, wide area networking or even, or even like multi-cloud networking stuff. Because that's really, uh, we, we need, my company needs an SD-WAN type solution, right? We're going to mm -hmm. uh, have, have some efficiencies and cut some costs. And we're going to be, you know, a little more cookie cutter in deployments, right? Mm -hmm. That's really the big, our big issue. But I, I don't want to take the time. Right. <laughs> I don't have the time to take to dedicate to put this solution out. So it'd be awesome to say, here, here's, here's twenty dollars. See what you can do with that. <laughs> so, and twenty, twenty, <laughs> fifty, fifty, <laughs> and and you, know, <laughs> and you know what? That's interesting, and that's. As we've been in, as we've been in discussions with with customers, and as we've we've gone back to a lot of our early early customers from the SD WAN space, that that sentiment, that that approach, mm -hmm. is not just in smaller companies. A lot of the the larger enterprises are saying the policy configuration and management, building tunnels, mapping traffic to tunnels setting all of those, you know, building those policies and doing traffic engineering to leverage the SD-WAN service or SD-WAN technology that we have deployed is too much for us. Mm -hmm. even, in, even in, you know, fairly large enterprise, they're saying that. So that has been part of, been part of the, the approach and been part of the, the problem statement that, that we're looking at solving with, with graphing. Tunnels, tunnels are challenging. I'll I'll say it, and he'll he'll wa he'll watch the video later, and he'll call me into his office. But um, but when when Ali and Khalid and I are on are on a lot of calls, I say, yeah, we we kind of created a lot of these problems, <laughs> <laughs> building the overlay right with with, with Vitella, and um, Khalid accurately points out when we when we built Vitella, when he came up with the idea for SD WAN, you know multi-cloud and cloud and all of this stuff what wasn't a thing we didn't know that we would need to have connections to all of these different cloud providers all these different partners application providers that kind of thing so so the tunnel scale problem we, we didn't foresee mm -hmm. now that that's come about that's why 10 years later it's like we, we need a new approach okay any other questions about the uh about the use cases i can go back to that slide Nope. So from uh, from kind of early early enterprise references and early early customers in the in the early field trials, um, I love the quote from from a, the VP and and head of infrastructure at this financial services company. He was talking about our business to business connectivity and what he can do with that, and how if his business partners are just already present on this Graphene network. And he can connect to them without the need to build IPsec tunnels, without the need to, to, to do traffic engineering. 
to bring their services onto his network, it's a huge win for his business, a huge win for, for the networking team there.